everybody and welcome back. Today we are taking a trip to the Grand Bazaar. Uh, we're going to be going from um, one end of Istanbul to the other on foot. So I'm going to show you how we can actually take the bridge from um, the Taksim area over to the Sultan Mehmet area and then over to the Grand Bazaar. We're going to see some attractions. Um, basically just the Grand Bazaar today just because I couldn't get my Istanbul card figured out. Uh, today so i can't get into um, um a, co the, a couple of the historic sites so we're just going to stick with that today um i think that's going to be enough from what i'm told the grand bazaar is huge and you can spend all day in it so um yeah i'm going for my airbnb which is in shishley walk through taxum and now i'm going over the bridge and uh heading to the grand bazaar all right let's go This is the Spicy Bazaar. Uh, just kind of a smaller version of the Grand Bazaar, but I kind of stumbled upon this accidentally. And the architecture in here is just amazing. Everybody's so friendly, but yet everybody wants to sell you something too. So um, you could spend a few hours in here, even though it's really not that big, just talking to the people and trying everything that they want you to try. But I'm just on my way out now and you can just see how beautiful this place was. I just walked out of the spicy bazaar um, we're not even to the real area of the Grand Bazaar yet and you can tell there's just so many shops out here that people go to um, you name it and you can buy something around here in fact everybody's more than willing to sell you something here um, free samples everywhere so many uh, textiles shoes um, men and women alike uh, luggage, dresses as you can see, rugs, food, spices, tea, uh, you name it, you think of it and you can pretty much uh, find it here. All right, we have arrived just a few short steps away from the Egyptian Bazaar or the Spicy Bazaar. This is the Grand Bazaar. I'm not really sure if there is one of those like shopping mall maps to know exactly where you're going. You almost just have to walk around and find your way and I have a feeling you just kind of get lost in it. Kind of like a YouTube video. You start watching something and it leads you to something else and then something else. Before you know it, you're not you're not even watching what you uh, logged on to YouTube to watch. I think the bazaar is kind of the same way. You're looking for one thing, and by the time you leave, uh, you, you might end up having about 50 things that you don't need. So as I'm walking through here right now, I'm just kind of gonna do some shopping, walk around and see what they all have. I don't really, I'm not really looking for anything specific, just kind of taking it all in right now. Uh, it's a beautiful market, and um, 
fun fact about this is the oldest enclosed outdoor market in the world. And we're gonna show you why. I'm just gonna show you a bunch of footage of inside the market. We've only just walked in and there's city blocks and city blocks of this place. Take a look. As I'm walking through here now, one thing I've noticed right away is it kind of seems like there's a lot of like departments in here. Uh, you can go from one area and it's just like lighting, um, ceramics, textiles, things like that. And then there's a, also um, goods, things to eat, um, different types of dry teas, pottery, jewelry. Um, and it's just kind of mixed. And Kind of just go down one lane and there's something else and then now there's like uh, lighting there's just it's overwhelming really i mean there's just so much in here your eyes really just can't consume everything that's in here So I was just walking through here and this place was packed as you've seen before 10 minutes ago. Um, and it's suddenly prayer time um, for the people here. And it just calmed right down. Now there's hardly anybody at all in here. Um, it's kind of, it's strange how quiet it is. It just in the past 10 minutes, um, things got so calm in here. I, mean, I guess I don't mind. It's just it's just a feeling that you get once as soon as it happened. It was like a split second of you could hear the hustle and bustle of this place, and then the prayer started. And everybody kind of knelt down on their carpet and rugs that I, I showed before a little bit, and um, yeah, it just got really quiet. It's part of the territory, I suppose. Um, once again, I have to say it's overwhelming in here. If you came here looking for something to buy something, in fact, going back on it, some of the shops even closed down as well. Now, what I was going to say, if you came here to buy something and you had something that you wanted, whether it was a t-shirt or socks, underwear, um, a tea set or anything, um, and you leave here empty handed, um, I don't know how because there is literally everything legal that you can buy in here. I just bought some tea and I was, I was just trying to come in here and keep an open mind as far as, I didn't really need anything, but I knew I was gonna leave with something. So I just bought some tea, which was delicious. He let me try it before. Uh, people give you plenty of samples while you're in here. So you wouldn't even have to eat lunch coming in here. People just offer you so much food whether it's sugary goods, nuts, uh, tea, coffee, basically anything that you could think of, they're just gonna offer it to you. And um, you just, you'd get full. So like I said, you don't have to eat lunch or breakfast before you even come in here. You're gonna, you definitely get your sugar fix here as well. 
Um, I, so I knew this was gonna happen. I just kept taking turn after turn while I've been in here and I have no idea where the beginning is now. So um, I know it can't be too hard. And once again, thanks to Google Maps, I will, uh, I'll be able to find my way back out. And now I can tell it's starting to pick back up again. So uh, prayer must be just getting over. So, like I said, I'm just kind of walking through here and taking as many turns as I can, purposely trying to get lost just to see everything and make sure I don't miss anything. Um, one main thing that I can see so far in here is there's a lot of like um, Turkish tea sets in here. A lot of lights, a lot of teas, a lot of sweets, a lot of nuts, a lot of spices. As I say that, see the sweet spices, honey. Again, a Turkish tea sets. Um, I'm trying to stay away from the food because I hate to say no to these people because they're so friendly. You don't want to say no to them. I, I mean, I've said no several times and I still felt like I've ate about a pound worth of Turkish delights. So, um, it's an amazing place. So far, the people are absolutely friendly here. They're more than willing to... Um, help you out even if you don't buy something they'll they'll give you your recommend their recommendation on what you should see where you can find a certain product so people here are genuinely friendly and like i said if you leave here without buying anything or you were looking for something and you didn't buy it um you weren't looking hard enough because i pretty much saw anything everything and anything you could see within the first five minutes of being here so this market is beautiful i mean i've seen youtube videos of it before and it helped and it made it inspired me to want to come here uh, because of the history to it um and because you know the plethora of the products that are in here but um it's just something that you have to see with your own eyes it's 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 a whole new world inside here it's it's unbelievable oh and plenty of shisha too and chest sets and swords and fake guns and rugs and there's also restaurants in here. The one thing I can't find so far is uh, I try to get a sticker in every country that I visit and I'm yet to be, be able to find a Turkish sticker. So I guess that's the one thing I'm actually looking for right now that I can't find. Uh, now everybody's praying over here so I'm not gonna go that way. I'll just walk through here just to show you guys what's going on. It's like when when uh, the people here aren't praying. Everything is open back up again, um, and now it's just jam packed with people all the way down. As you can see, all the stores are open again. It's unbelievable that how, it, how quickly it just shuts down here uh, during that. I mean, I totally respect it. It's just not something I'm used to coming from the United States. Um, for something to just completely shut down like that. And as you saw in the video, it's not everything shuts down. Uh, just the practicing Muslims that during prayer time um, shut down their stores and there was hardly anybody in here. Uh, it, it's crazy. And now it's just completely full again. Um, 
so this place is like a, a flea market on steroids, I guess you could call it. And the thing is, is with everything that's good here, there are some bad things. You, you can't just look at anything without being bombarded by shop owners. Um, if you just stop and look at something, they are going to be all over you. Um, just a, I don't, I don't care what it is. If you're looking, me being a man, if I'm looking at a woman's dress, you're going to have so many salesmen come up to you. Uh, just come in and check it out. Which, I mean, I don't blame them. It's just you can't just window peek shop here. You are going to get bombarded with people. But most of the time, it comes with hospitality. Most of the time, they're going to offer you. Um, some tea. I, I was offered free tea by so many people. I turned down probably 10 people already and I've taken probably four glasses of tea since I've been here. Um, Turkish delights, sugars, uh, different desserts. I mean, people are offering you things. Um, the best thing about this is that while I'm filming, nobody ever says anything to me so I can walk just through here and not get hassled by people. Once again, it, it, I shouldn't use the word hassle because they're only trying to make a sale and I don't blame them for that. It's just um, overwhelming really with how much, um, how good of a salespeople they are. They don't really take no for an answer. I was in a carpeting shop and I told the person, I live out of my suitcase and I really don't have a home and I, I can't really buy anything that big. And he was like, I give you the best price. And he gave me a sales pitch for like 15 minutes. Um, and to the point where I felt bad, where I had to kept saying, no, I can't buy it because I literally can't fit it in my suitcase. So you have to have a kind of a stiff backbone here by, and you have to be able to say no if you don't want to buy something because if, if you fall into these sales traps, you're going to buy pretty much everything that they sell you and you're going to leave here, you know, not empty handed, but with no money left, that's for sure, with a lot of possessions. Um, so like I said, when I came here before, or when I walked in, they have everything, but really the one thing that I want to buy here is a sticker for my, for my suitcase because I buy a sticker with the flag on it from every country I go to and yet I'm not able to find one sticker in this whole place, believe it or not. Um, so I'm looking to buy one of those stickers and if I can buy a sticker, I'll probably um, gang it together with another product. Um, there's a couple things that I want to buy, but I'm just looking for stickers right now. Like I said, I bought tea. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna continually walk around here. I don't think I've walked down the same same lane or aisle or corridor. I, I don't even know what you'd call these things yet. Ah, they accept Bitcoin even. So invest in your crypto, people. Now, continue to look for stickers. Okay, that is that from the Turkish mall. A um, couple things that I bought. I finally found my stickers. I got them for like a dollar too. The cheapest place I've bought in stickers so far in any country. Uh, what else did I get? I got tea. I already told you that. Um, oh, and I bought six pairs of socks for like 60 lira. So like... I don't know, like $10, something like that. Less than $10, I'm not even sure. Less than $10, so like $8. Um, and then uh, I ended up leaving with, it shows how, how good the salespeople are here. I ended up leaving with like a handful of business cards 
because everybody guaranteed me uh, that they were gonna do business with me for photography. They're gonna get photos done of their store. But unfortunately, they can't have them done today, some other day, you know, they, they'll call me or I call them, get photos done. And then I tell them I really can't buy anything because I can't fit anything else in my suitcase. Then that's like they don't want pictures done anymore. So I got a whole pocket full of uh, uh, business cards. But nonetheless, um, my takeaway, I guess, from that whole experience was it was busy. It was packed. Um, once again, they have everything that you need there in the Grand Bazaar. Um, inflated prices. Uh, there are tourist prices in there. So you definitely have to haggle. Um, nothing is final price there. In fact, when I was walking in, I was filming a little bit of video and some girls were talking to me, they spoke English and uh, she was from Istanbul. And I asked her, I'm like, do, actually, do locals actually shop in, in the Grand Bazaar? And she's like, not really. She's like, the locals usually know all the, the wholesalers anyway. So they deal with the people where they get their um, products from. So um, all these prices are inflated just a little bit, but with the economy the way it is right now, I don't feel, or I feel inclined to help out a lot of these small business owners, especially the ones that are very respectful, um, that don't pressure you, the ones that are helpful, uh, answer questions for you. Um, this is why I'm traveling, to kind of spread my money um, to countries like this and to help countries like this. Um, so yeah, I spent a little bit of money here. Um, walked around, got some exercise. I'm on the way other end of Istanbul, so I got a lot more walking to do yet. But I just wanted to take a tour of the Grand Bazaar because it's, it's an iconic area here in Istanbul. So it's definitely one place if you ever visit this city, you're going to be going or you should be going. Um, and I know from back home, uh, most of the women like to do a lot of shopping. And I will tell you this, women, if you want to do some shopping, or if you're a man that really likes to do sh some shopping, um, go to the Grand Bazaar because you, it's like, think of this, if you're American people watching this, and I know I don't have too many American viewers, but we have this thing called the Mall of America. Now think of the Mall of America times like a hundred. There's that many stores in there. So you could spend, you know, literally eight hours in there. There's like a food court. They have um, tea, coffee shops in there. Uh, you name it. Uh, there, there's everything in there. But I, I just had to get out. You know, it was so crowded in there. I had everything I need. And it's still sunny. And so I want to explore this side of Istanbul a little bit more today. Uh, but I just wanted to make the video of the Grand Bazaar. And I'm glad you guys came with me today. It's, it was a beautiful... Uh, beautiful tour i enjoyed going there uh, it was a good experience all the way around so if you like this video of the grand bazaar uh please give it a thumbs up i really appreciate it and once again i appreciate you uh your loyalty to me to this channel and helping me build it and all the comments and everything else have really been supportive to me and so thank you very much i love you guys all and i hope you all have a great day goodbye from turkey